Hello YouTube and welcome to this channel. In this tutorial I'm going to go over the transient uh, simulations once again and uh, in this time I'm going to, uh, to explain how you can set up a translational uh, motion. Um, it's going to be a useful uh, simulations and there are multiple applications that you can actually use this simulations to simulate the results. Uh, in this application I'm gonna use a very simple design as you can see over here. Uh, we have a coil uh, from copper and we have a magnet uh, in the middle and we are going to excite the magnet and move it from the bottom all, all the way to the top uh, with whatever speed that we, we want to define. Let's, let's show you how it's gonna work. So I'm going to go and animate this. So, uh, so the magnet is going to, uh, as you can see, the magnet is going to go up like this. And we are going to do simulations. Here, uh, you can see the distinguish between uh, using sweep, parametric sweep, and uh, the motion, uh, transient motion setup. So you might ask, oh, I can actually uh, use the parametric sweep and just move this uh, magnet all the way up, and then I just use magnetostatic simulations all the, all the time for each uh, parametric situation. But the point is, uh, because you are moving it, you are exciting eddy current. And that will make uh, to have some current going through the coil. But if you do the sweep, each time it, um, it, it, it takes the magnet as a stationary point in the in the space and therefore there is no movement and therefore there is no um, current going to be excited so we will uh, we will see how you can uh, create this uh, simple design uh, as you can see and after that we are going to see in the next video how to do the excitations and making the boundary conditions and the bands and the third video is going to be all about this result so let's go ahead and start uh, designing the coil and uh, the rest of the circuit. So over here I have the uh, Ansoft Maxwell version 15 and uh, I'm going to start version 14 actually and I'm going to start with this version and uh, I'm going to click on the insert Maxwell 3D design and uh, I will start with the canvas that I have, empty canvas that I have over here and uh, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, surface and make sure that the plane is going to be Y and Z. And over there I'm going to select the simple uh, circle and I'm going to draw a circle like this. Uh, you can call the circuit whatever you want. Um, over here it's called circle 1. Uh, you can call it like for example coil, whatever. And uh, press OK. Now that the surface uh, of the surface, uh, the, the, the circle is selected, I can go on the helix and uh, draw a helix out of this. So I'm going to say a helix from here all the way to the top. And the number of turns is going to be like, for example, five turns. And uh, the pitch is going to be you know, like one millimeters, perhaps is fine. And uh, I press OK. And the type is going to be copper, so right there you can go edit and say copper, and uh, copper is going to be selected, and uh, you can uh, you can edit the color so uh, it kind of reflect the copper for you, and you can make the transparency more towards the opaque, so you can see it better. So this is the what we have, okay? And uh, so let's go on the top and uh, change the plane into XY so now you can see that you can play, play over here and uh, let's select uh, the rectangle polygon or you can go with the cylinder and then uh, put the number of polygon that you want so I'm going to go with the cylinder in this case select the center and then go whatever amount that you want so this is going to be our magnet the, the red magnet that I show you that it was moving and um, let's put whatever number, so this is good enough. And for the D, uh, uh, Z, we can have like two millimeters, so this is this is taking us. And then we can call this one magnet. Uh, we can put a color like, uh, like a red color, and uh, we can make it to be not very transparent actually, the same way. And uh, go back to the uh, 
material go on edit and uh, here you call it uh, uh, NDF E35 which is a good one uh, clone the material because you have to change something about this so I'm going to clone the material and um, in the Cartesian uh, system type I want to make sure that the magnetic S and N is in the Z axis not the X axis because as you see here um, I'm going to go up and down toward the Z axis and I want to have my magnet going up and down to the Z axis as well so I mean I, I want to have a S on the top and Z N on the bottom of the Z so uh, so for that reason you do not want to have that in the X component so you put 0 for the X component and you put 1 for the Z component you may ask what is this 1 represent it doesn't represent anything it just it basically it's a binary thing either 0 or 1 if you put 100 it doesn't mean anything it's just like uh, it's just 1 so okay because already the magnitude is designed, designed here of course if you put like 2 and 1 then it does mean something but if it's 0 1 doesn't mean anything um, you can check the material it's fine press OK and uh, you call it um, um, yeah you could have putting a name for it like you can you could have calling it like my magnet uh, I can go over here and edit that to say my uh, my magnet uh, try uh, to not use underline in the naming because uh, Maxwell doesn't like it that much it gives you weird errors later on so uh, Um, sure, whatever. So, so now I have my magnet, and it's defined in a way that uh, it's only in the x and directions. Okay, it doesn't show it. So that's good. So I have defined my magnet, and pressing OK. Let me sweep this and see how did I define this. Well, you know, this is a bit big, so I'm gonna go and do some modifications. Under the magnet, I'm gonna double click and say. Uh, okay, I have no problem with the radius, but I have a problem with the height. Let's make the height a bit less, like maybe one uh, millimeter. So now it's a bit like better. And uh, go back again. Uh, one more thing that we we said that we cannot have cylindrical in in the trans translation or movement. So any object that is moving uh, need to be defined within a band. We call that band, and it's just like a just like an uh, area around that object that is moving. So the band cannot be cylindrical, and the other thing is uh, you cannot have the object that is moving also to be cylindrical. By cylindrical, I mean you cannot have it to be a true surf surface, true curve. Um, true curve is when you have the number of segments to zero. When you put the number of segment eight then it's not true care and it's okay so we have like an 8 uh, polygon and now I'm gonna define the area that this guy is gonna move in so I'm gonna go and select this time I can actually select the polygon it's the same thing and uh, go over this uh, distance it's not gonna touch the coil so I'm gonna make sure that this guy is not touching the coil and just pressing OK and um, you know I'm gonna just put a number here but uh, later on I'm gonna change it so uh, number of uh, segments 12 that's fine uh, I want to go back here first name the call name it band and make it to be more uh, transparent maybe the color want to be a bit like I don't know like uh, grayish okay and uh, that's not great but anyway so um, I'm gonna start from negative minus 10 uh, millimeter uh, down and uh, I wish I knew what that means. So let's just leave it like that. Um, the height uh, is going to be uh, 30 millimeter, and let's see what will happen. Okay, now I realize what that means. So this guy should be. So let's do this. So let me go again, again and use the cylindrical because I don't like the way that it's defined. So. I'm going to use and again another cylindrical for the band and uh, this time I'm going to put like 2 millimeters whatever and name it 
band. Hopefully it will agree. And uh, vacuum is fine. Uh, it's going to be only uh, a band that uh, we are just selecting the uh, environment that is moving. So we don't care if it's vacuum. It's, in fact, it should be vacuum. Um, if it's if you are using air around, it's going to be air for the region that you're testing. And uh, you know, so center position. So this can be minus one minus 10 millimeters and over here the height can be 30 millimeters so that should be fine and then the number of uh, segments you can put 12 now so that will uh, take care of what we are trying to do so let me just move this there we go so now we have our uh, our band or whatever uh, it looks like it's a bit too much so maybe we can make it uh, slightly smaller like maybe 20 should be okay. And uh, maybe minus 5 gives you the right attitude. Okay, so remember minus 5 and uh, 15 on the top, right? 20 goes up. So, so now that we know that, we can have a region around this. So. Uh, let's go again with the same tool and over here I'm selecting the middle and then I'm going to have a region. Now, um, I can have this region to be cylindrical and it's better to be cylindrical because it's all like the same, um, especially for the uh, meshing. But uh, because I want to have extension of my coil, I want to make it not cylindrical. In this case, I want to make it to be um, you know, a rectangular sort of a deal. So uh, let me just go with that and uh, the 20 over here. So this is going to be minus, as I said, minus 5, I believe, and this was 20, should be fine. So uh, that would be exactly uh, right. That's exactly what I want. Uh, pretty nice. And box 1 can change to region, whatever. So it's, in, um, it's, it's vacuum. So should be fine, and uh, you know, I'm gonna make the bot region a bit like uh, more transparent so we can see inside better. And uh, so now we have the region that all the simulation is gonna be done. We have the band that the moving part is going to basically tells the simulator that there's gonna be a moving part within this band. And we have our coil and we have our magnet. The last thing that you wanna do is you wanna bring the coil terminals all the way. Uh, towards the towards the boundary that uh, or the region, uh, so then uh, you can have the simulation running. So to do that, um, uh, one simple, very simple way is uh, change the, the surface into Y and Z. And uh, now what you can do is you can go and select uh, the the cylinder and select the center, uh, zoom in a bit, and then you should be able to select the side. And then just uh, bring it over. Um, so now we are in X direction, if I'm right. Yes. So, so just click here. And uh, remember, this is starts from zero because uh, the coil is defined the same way. It goes from the zero X all the way up to the zero X. It stops there. So it starts from zero, and we wanted to stop at where the air was. And I think I put. Let me just go back on the air. Uh, so the region, sorry. So the region was extended from 10 uh, plus 10 of the X. So let me show you uh, a better way. So over here, we have this terminal. Okay, this terminal. Bring it out. And uh, we want to see how this much should go. So we know that this part here is minus, is plus 10. Uh, because it's defined here plus 10. And we know that the X is minus 20. So plus 10 minus 20 is minus 10. So we know that this point should be minus 10. So we go on the cylinder that we just created and we can call it terminal. Um, okay, And uh, we go on the terminal and we say it's going to end in the x direction with this radius. It's going to end at minus 10. It's a start at 0, so it's going to end at minus 10. There we go. It's exactly touching that. Same thing will apply for the other side. So let me uh, rotate this and bring it over here. So this is the other side. 
and uh, I'm gonna go again and use the cylinder here center I, I'm using this snap uh, feature very well because I really like this snap feature it's, it's very helpful and uh, snapping it there and bring it out um, so you can actually put the, the, the DZ value to plus 10 and that's, that will do the job and uh, as you can see uh, oh, the height is 5 for some reason here anyway so it should be 10 and done so uh, last thing you want to do is you want to select the coil okay and then you want to select the control key and then you want to select the cylinder 1 and then you want to select the cylinder uh, 2 which is called terminal okay so these two are selected and now I'm gonna go with the union and because I select the coil first it will become all copper and it becomes under the name of coil remember that's that's the easy way to do that and so I have the coil selected and everything is fine um, so I have my copper and uh, I have my region I have my band and I have my magnet um, and I can call it done for now everything is there and uh, there's nothing else to work on it so uh, I hope that you enjoyed this uh, short video on how to create um, a magnetic uh, uh, coil like this and um, I will see you in the next video for the excitation and the band.